Just imagine arriving home, your bags are packed. Yes, I'm, I'm serious. You get to your front door and your bags are packed one by one on the lawn. What would you do? <laughs> well, my intention was for him not to come back in the house at all. <laughs> it was my intention. <laughs> well, exactly. It's all about conflict resolution, as we'll find out today. I'm Dr. Anthony Fatonda, and it's my pleasure to be with, with you. Um, I think our biggest accolade is that we have 10 beautiful grandchildren as a result of four children that blessed us so much. Is there anything else that you would like to add about who we are? Yeah, I just want to say hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Fantona. It's awesome to be with you here. I'm so sorry that we're not right there with you, but, you know, thank goodness we have got technology and it's an awesome, awesome, awesome honor and privilege for us to share what we've learned and why we're still, and why he still has his bags in the house and not on the lawn. We're here tonight purely because of our wonderful friends from Hilltop Christian International Center. And that is Dr. Stephanie Wari and Pastor Chris. Beautiful friends. And as you know, this is a true love conference. And yes, this is all about love extraordinaire. And we want to just bring a touch of difference to that tonight as we bring you the topic on conflict resolution. But would you agree with me? People always focus on the wrong thing. They focus on conflict. And that's where the things go wrong. It's because everybody thinks that it's about conflict. And what we need to remember is there's two words here, conflict resolution. And if what you focus on is what you're going to get. So if you focus on conflict, you're going to have conflict. So what I suggest you do and what we've been doing over these years is let's focus on resolution. Because if you focus on a resolution, you're able to resolve your conflict in really good, godly mannerisms. Well, talking about that, what does the Bible teach about conflict resolution? Let's speak about Ephesians 4, verse 26 and 27. Firstly, it says, in your anger, do not sin. Secondly, it says, while you're still angry, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, it says, do not give the devil a foothold. But the first thing there, don't sin in your anger. How do we do that? When you're angry, you're angry. Absolutely. And that's where it all starts. That's where we need to start focusing on saying, okay, if I am on a journey and I'm walking to grow from glory to glory and to work my path, okay, no one can make me angry and no one can make me not angry anymore. The only person who can do that is myself with the work of the Holy Spirit. So we need to stop pointing the finger and saying, you've made me angry because he did nothing to make me angry. In fact, here's the test for you. If I say to Michelle, I will give you a million dollars not to get angry tomorrow. And I'm going to send somebody to accost you even slightly through the face. But for a million dollars, what would you do? I would choose not to be angry. I might be annoyed. I might be upset, but I'm not going to be angry because I'm going to keep my anger in check because there's a reward at the end of this. And isn't that our reward eternal? And that's what we've got to be looking at is how do we focus on? Do not sin in your anger. That's your responsibility. Now, the second part is where so many people actually get this wrong, where it says, before the sun goes down, <laughs> do not be angry but or don't keep on to your anger but this yeah. is so what many people do is they actually hold on to that because they believe it means don't let the sun go down until you've resolved your conflict yes it does that's not what it says it doesn't say that in the bible it it really doesn't so ladies there's no reason why you should not let your man go to sleep even though you're angry, send yourself to the, the bedroom or to your prayer closet and go resolve that inner anger with yourself because God said, just don't go bed, to bed when you are angry. So how do we practically do that? And it, it literally <laughs> just comes to saying, sweetheart, I'm angry, but we'll deal with it tomorrow. Because one thing we can tell you, you never try and resolve conflict while you're angry. The last time to ever do it. But the third one gives you the solution. Mm. Don't give the devil a foothold. Will you? Well, it depends on how you respond to that because your behavior will be the key. Like we always say, 
behavior never lies. Mm -hmm. So we want to advocate and say, don't give the devil a foothold because then only the devil wins and we lose and the Lord Jesus Christ loses as well because he'll be ashamed of us. So let's hang in there as we realize devil is not a place for you. This is a place for godly conflict and that's what we'd like to address and, yeah. tonight. Correct. So we're going to teach you how to fight a godly fight. One that you're going to come out on top. You're going to be proud of yourself. You're going to be proud of your partner. And God is going to be extremely proud of you. So if you really want to do that, I would say get your pens, get your notebooks, because now we're going to teach you what we have been through. And trust me, with two volatile personalities that we are, where we both, especially me, I explode. Um, some of you will know exactly how that is done. And you? <laughs> well, um, when I'm emotional, I get angry. But I've had to learn to control that anger because while I'm angry, I cannot resolve the conflict. So the first thing we have to do is in our household say, what are we going mm -hmm. to do? Because after that dreadful day, we realized we had no mechanism in place what to do when we really have conflict. Absolutely. And after we sat down, after we talked, after we were calm, we actually realized that we need to do something simple. And then you'll not believe this. There was a pillow lying in front of us. And Michelle just took the pillow and said, I've got it. What did you do? So I said, let's call this principle that we're about to work out what it is that we're going to do. Because you know that in most of you are in the workplace and you know you have got in the workplace rules and regulations that if you do this, then they're going to punish you this way, whatever, whatever, whatever. We know that that happens in the workplace. Your home functions like that as well. So we grabbed this pillow and we called it the pillow on the floor method. So what we did was we first said, what is the problem? And we actually had to isolate it and get to the point where we realized the problem was my wife did not like my attitude. Can you believe that? Mine? <laughs> but that was the problem. My wife didn't like my attitude, but my attitude was that of one that is superior. Well, I'm better than you. And she just had had enough. So she put on that pillow your attitude. So the purpose of the pillow on the floor and the biggest mistake that most of us make is that we, we bring a whole lot of issues together to make our case. And when I'm going to make my case against Anthony, I want as much ammunition as possible so that I can win the fight. Well, with the pillow on the floor method, you can't do that. You only can discuss that one issue. So when we said, I said, I don't like your attitude. Now that could be a, a whole lot of things. I then had to go one step further and clarify the moment and the time that I did not like what happened. And that's the only thing that we would discuss. He might have had a bad attitude a week ago or a month ago or a year ago, but we only talked about that one issue that we wrote on the pillow and what did we do before we even started talking about it obviously we just started going to pray because there's no way that you're going to solve this problem if it literally is you fending for yourself so we did we agreed to go into prayer and we literally said what is the issue and the issue came onto the pillow we then took that pillow threw it on the floor and now that was the point of discussion, nothing else. Now, what happens if your partner is not a believer and he, they don't want to go into prayer? What would you do there? You prepare yourself in prayer because remember, you are called to serve one another in love. I mean, true love will serve. You'll do whatever it takes because that's the partner that you chose for life. So what you want to do is make sure that you are ready to go into what people, other people would think battle. No. Conflict can be constructive. Constructive resolving of a problem is good. Constructive conflict is positive. It's not negative. That's the way to get to real and true love. I can tell you one thing. Once you sorted it out, making up is so much better. Isn't that true? <laughs> and aren't I supposed to win you over with a gentle, quiet spirit as opposed to an argumentative, angry, disrespectful one? Correct. And when that attitude is in check, anything can be discussed. So what is the bottom line here? Number one is that, that you take the problem, you write it on the pillow, you throw the pillow on the floor and say, that's it. Because now what happens? Normally it is, I turn to you and I want to find about me and I want to say that you are wrong and you then return that to I want, uh, But I'm right. But you're wrong. You shouldn't have done that. Can you see the finger pointing? 
And that's exactly what you do, because now what we're doing is we're actually standing side by side. We took the problem, we wrote it on the pillow, and we cast the pillow away from us, and that's what we focus on. Period. Side by side, not, not fight fisting fisting, right. okay? Side by side, so that when you do turn toward each other, you're actually doing it in a nice, kind way. So that is the way that we actually dealt with it. And I can tell you now that we use the same principle with our children. Yes. Because our children came and they've wanted to find about the yellow t-shirt and the other but you took my red t-shirt, stop, stop, stop. First the red, a yellow t-shirt. So we fixed that problem about the yellow t-shirt. Then we said, any other problems? Red t-shirt. And then we actually handled them one by one because only one thing was written on the pillow at a time. So that's what we call the pillow on the floor method. It is a principle. But now, here's the th thing. Sometimes you are just so angry that at that time you yes. want to literally strangle your wife. You know, I've never <laughs> thought about divorce, but murder often. But you know, it's because we're human. So what do you do when you really have a problem that you're so angry that right now you actually can't deal with the problem? You know, that happened to us once, okay? We really honestly, we had an a horrific, a horrific argument, and it ended up being a whole family argument, which we'll talk to you about how children play a role in this as well. But <laughs> we really had to practice this because I was so angry, and this was before I grew in realizing that we had to have put principles in place. And I was gr only growing, so I was a young Christian, so I was still behaving in the flesh. And I was having a go. I was saying horrible things to Anthony. I was belittling him. I was really, really being nasty. And he just said, you know what? It made him so angry that he then said, time out. Time out. And she said, you're not talking to me. And I just had this. Time and place. That's it. And she says, explain. I said, I will be out of here for at least an hour. And I'll be on the hockey field. I'm going to just hit a few golf balls. She knew where I was. She knew I wasn't going to see somebody else. And she knew how long it was going to be because the person who calls timeout, which was me, is the person who has to come back an hour later because that is what you agreed to come and address the problem. Because at that time, I was just so foamingly, fumingly mad. I just could not deal with the issue. So it's called the timeout principle that has time and place. Now, golden rules for timeout principle. Number one, you don't go to your mother, ladies, and start complaining to your mother. Number two, for gentlemen, you don't go to your girlfriend's house and you don't go to the pub. Those are three things that are going to make this thing very, very, very bad. So stay away. So time out, go to the pastor, go to your, your cell pastor, go to someone that can actually help you process this in a nice, godly, clear way absolutely and as you know uh, i'm just thinking of the guy who wanted to go to the bar you know you're not going there to drink because you're thirsty and alcohol has never resolved any problems <laughs> so just let it go what okay, it, it does. doesn't work <laughs> what it does okay so that's called the time but principle but what we've done over the years we actually said how can we can come up with something solid that people can remember mm -hmm. So we want to teach you something tonight called the fights principle. So we want to teach you how to fight, fight a godly fight. fight. <laughs> That's right. And uh, I will tell you what it stands for, and then we can elaborate. The F stands for face each other. As in, when you have a conflict, does it help that I am literally sitting watching my television, I'm shouting at the woman. And, and I'm in the kitchen washing ditches and shouting and throwing cupboard doors and slamming them shut. That doesn't work. <laughs> because you know you can't see and relate and you can't connect with a person so what we literally do is we face each other by looking at each other sitting next to each other yeah. and so that you can turn cordially and you can face each other and respectingly and talk about the pillow i must tell you one thing it's so much easier and if, if, if you can hold her hands before she <laughs> misuses them just hold those hands but we face each other because we've just found you connecting with the person the true thing was being apart and being distant didn't solve the problem because you do not connect. Absolutely. So the F stands for face each other. Then the second one was for I for isolate the issue. Now, don't you think that with a pillow on the floor really replaces the pillow? The pillow on the floor is isolate the issue. It's isolating the issue. Remember, when you're isolating that issue, you write down the, this, the topic that you're going to discuss. 
the topic that you are now going to resolve, where you're going to find a resolution so that this issue does not come back. But now, how long will it take to possibly resolve these issues? Yes, the truth. <laughs> After that fight, we started making a list of everything that we're unhappy about and everything we wanted to solve. And then we literally exchanged our forms. I'll be honest with you, my form had 68 issues. I said, what? And mine was three full scaf pages. So what we had to do was say, hold on, where do you start? Exactly. Prioritization. You actually ask yourself the question, what's the biggie? What's the most difficult one? Because if we can beat this one together, we can beat anything. And it took us three weeks, am I right? Three weeks <laughs> to fix that for the first yes. one. So we're sharing from our own personal lives just to show that we're not perfect. And you know what? We've gone through this. And today, here we are in Love Extraordinary. And I can tell you one thing. 26 years later. 26 years later. <laughs> we are more in love today than what we've ever been before. Absolutely. But this is one of the key resolutions that we know how to have a godly fight. So we're busy with the acronym FIGHTS. The F was face each other. The I is isolate the issue. The G, difficult one. Guard your oh. tongue. Guard your tongue. I think it's a little bit harder for us ladies. Ladies, maybe. <laughs> okay, it all depends on where you're on your spiritual growth. And that is a difficult thing. And when we say guard your tongue, that means seriously, no name calling, no belittling your partner. You really have to be a mature person to resolve conflict. You know, I've gone out thinking of, of James 3 now. You know, because it just says, if you look in the Bible about the function of the tongue, and it speaks there about that this here, if you think you can keep yourself in check, you think you're a perfect man, there is no such man. That is James 3 verse 2. There is no such person. Then it speaks further on in that how this tongue can be compared with a horse and a bridle, a ship and a rudder. But the biggest one is a fire that runs away. It says this tongue sure. is like a fire that sets everything ablaze. And it destroys everything along its path. So let's act biblical and realize whatever the Bible teaches, there's a reason for it. Because God knows. God knew, he knows, and he will know in the future. So we need to steer away from that. And that's guard your tongue. Because you cannot resolve a fight while you're calling each other bad names. It's mm. impossible. No. In fact, ever try to, when you're really angry, start by giving your wife a compliment. <laughs> you, you get you get off guard. Okay, she'll say, where's well, this going? Where's this going? What do you want? But, but at least you're doing it the right way. But the moment you insult your partner, there is no way that you can build a bridge and find the connect. So the next one that we're going to look at is F was face each other. I was isolate the issue. G was guard your tongue. The next one is called H for halt history. Yes. Now, this is a big one. Let's spend some time here. Yeah. This is a big problem in most marriages. Halt history. You go. Well, ladies, it's pointless talking about what happened on the 24th of November, 1982. All right. It's, it's pointless because we are now currently here in February and it's February 2021. So you need to, if you are going to go through the list that we said of issues that irritate you about your partner, the things that you fight about, the things that you don't like, you need to be mature enough to say, I need to discuss this one issue. Set yourself a time and a place that you're going to do that. But when you're doing it, if you get angry, remember, revert back to the F for fight. Um, and that was the time out. Okay. So do not bring up the past. The past is pointless. Okay. If, for example, you now, I've got a very handsome husband. So when we do go to places, the ladies do want to talk to my husband and the ladies do want to hug. Now, my husband's love language happens to be um, touch, which means he wants to hug everybody. Okay. And some people get the wrong message. So if I see something is going on, I will walk up to him. We have our code. I'll give him a touch on the hand and I'll just say, my darling, please be careful of that lady that's over there. But when we get home, it's pointless fighting about it. You see, we've already got the resolution for it. And that's what conflict resolution. But when we started off, I would fight about it. And then I'd say that lady and that lady and that lady and that lady. And it resolved nothing. Now it's my responsibility as his helper 
to help him to be aware that there are wolves out there and by in the a way, nice godly way gentle quiet spirit now while we're talking about touching i might as well role model and demonstrate to you what is appropriate and what is not appropriate i just want to tell you outright if you're a married man you just do not go to any other woman and you hug her from the front <laughs> that's not appropriate because it's not your woman what is acceptable and especially i'm speaking to my brothers and sisters in the church you come alongside and you hug from here that's okay because all you want to do is to hug to say i missed you and i want to connect with you so please understand that there's appropriate hugging and that's important we're busy talking about whole history. history now the biggest problem is that people keep on bringing up issues that happened four five six seven years ago and they still hold them because they are bitter when that verse said in your anger do not sin i can tell you now holding on quietly in what doesn't even look like anger is as sinful as the person who loses it and looks like they are not a good godly example yes. because holding on to that bitterness and unforgiveness is as sinful so i want to say to you don't do it because that is what holds you back and that's what prevents you from getting to the next level now holding on to something happened so far ago says only one thing you don't have a conflict resolution methodology tonight you are going to teach get this lesson and you are going to teach yourself at home and we're going to be repeating in the end how to remember this for a little bit longer Absolutely. so hold the history in terms of don't talk about what happened in the past okay so then now we go to the next letter after we have the H fault, history is T. The T is to be tuned in. Yeah. Oh gosh, L let me take this first. <laughs> Guys, this is where we as men mess up. The thing is, we pretend to listen and your wife will say, are you listening to me? Yes, sweetheart. But it's just going in a zzz and it's going out the other ear. We are not tuned in to really connect and to understand what they're trying to communicate and relate to us. Take me on because it's true. It's I battle. True. So talk to, talk to them in terms of how we resolve this. Well, again, it, it goes to understanding who your partner is. Now, guys, if you've never done marriage preparation, you're going to find this very, very difficult. And that is why we actually wrote a book because I said, if this, if I've got to tune in to Anthony, then I need to actually get a degree in Anthony. And Anthony needs to get a degree in me because what happens when a couple is dating where are they where's their focus well when you're dating everything you do think dream about is about your partner mm. and the moment you get married guess what happens it used to be like this now it's like this now you only think about namure uno me because now what happens instead of thinking of the other person being other person centered you become self-centered mm. the number one sin i believe in most marriages and the number one key to most continued conflict resolution or conflicts that have not been resolved. Absolutely. I really think that's you know, issue. There's a time for you to be selfish and selfish is good. Yes. All right. It just means because ultimately it should be God first, then yourself, then your spouse. Because if you're not tuned into God, how can you give what you're supposed to give to your partner? And so it's so important and that selfishness is your quiet time it's your time away from people it's the time to connect with god self-centeredness means the world revolves around me and guys we need to be very careful because we tend to put our children in the center of our universe and then it becomes self that's where they learn how to become self-centered and let me be honest most men work first then maybe self then the wife then the children and then sometimes god you've got the order all wrong because it should be god then you then your wife then your children and then your work but we make work our god you know what it says lack of faith we really don't believe that god is the all supplier that god is the giver of all good gifts and that's why we need to just have a double check in our faith and say god first mm -hmm. and as michelle said yeah the ladies well <laughs> children sort of children first and husband <laughs> right down after the washing after yeah. everything else and it should not but let's deal with that if you as a husband feel that's exactly what my problem is i feel that my wife does put my children in front of me let me help you with a bit of understanding remember they gave birth to them you and i i mean we had the, the the better part of our part of the consummation however 
they gave birth and that's there's a connection so it's natural for women to protect their children and as godly but in the order of god yes ladies be strong husband first yeah and then the children absolutely so we're looking at fight so the f is for face each other the i isolate the issue g guard your tongue h halt history t tune in and the last one the s the s stands for stay in here what does it help to come to an agreement that you will have a conflict resolution in place a methodology but you just try and you give up so you have to learn how to stay in there until when okay so until you have a resolution for the conflict now when we say stay in there it does not mean that if you decide that let's say it is monday evening the children have gone to bed and it's eight o'clock and you now are going to discuss an issue and you've written it on the pillow when we say stay in there it does not mean that you try and resolve that before you actually go to sleep because some issues you would start a discussion, then you need to go away and think about it, which means that you still need to go to bed. So give yourself a time frame. You know what? We're only going to discuss this for an hour. If we don't resolve the issue before an hour's up, then just table it, make a note and say, okay, fine, you go away tomorrow and think about it. I'll come and think about it. When can we continue the discussion? Because some, as, as Anthony said earlier on, some of our issues, it took us three weeks before we came to a resolution, before we understood, okay, this is it. This is how it's going to work for us. Because ultimately, when you have discussed an issue, I should feel that I have won this argument. Anthony needs to feel that he has won this argument. And our issue needs to have won as well. So Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. And he says we should all resolve for an, a win-win solution. But on a win-win solution... Either you or me. Correct. And what Somebody gets left, loses. And, and what gets left out? The, the actual problem. The actual problem. So there you have it, a win-win-win solution. And that is that you must feel you win, your wife must feel she won, but the issue actually is the winner. That way you have true absolution. And that would be like, for example... Um, okay, the next time this happens, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to resolve it. If the children do this, whatever it is, whatever resolution you come up with, that's what you stick to. Correct. Now, I actually said to make it easy for you, I'm going to show you how to remember the fights principle. I know my wife doesn't like this one, but you know what? It's because of what it implies. The first one is literally is I just do this. I don't say anything, but it actually says, face each other now guys you do it with us now okay you so do with us you all do this here we go we go face each other i didn't say <laughs> no 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 i didn't say, you know, that's fighting it's just a gentle just okay i can i can just hear the audience laughing about i mean this is this way to you so the first one is face each other the second way to show is just one thing in there isolate the issue so let's all do it together isolate the issue then we have G for guard your tongue. So we just go G for guard your tongue. Then we have H for halt history, and that is H, halt history. So it's halt history. And then we have be tuned in, and we go tune in. <laughs> and then we have S for stay there, and we just go let's stay there. Let's do them all together. Are you ready? All right. So the F is for face, face each, each other. <laughs> the I is for isolate the issue. The G is for guard your tongue. The H is for halt history. Then the T is for tune in. And the S is stay in there. Congratulations. Awesome. You have just graduated. You know how to fight, fight God a godly fight in the future. <laughs> so I really hope that helps you. And um, please uh, share this with your children as well. It's really awesome. I believe we've got some questions coming through on on. Your, your WhatsApp, I, I've, I've listened to it here. So we've been tuned in, we've been tuned in and uh, he has a few questions that okay. has come to us. We'd like to, to see if we can answer. For question you. one, what is conflict resolution? I think we've solved it. Remember, it's all about the resolution, not the conflict. Correct. Why is it that two people love themselves, but they engage in bitter conflicts? 
They, they love each other. They love themselves, but still they're in bitter conflicts. Normally, we have, we, there's a saying that goes along the lines of hurting people will hurt people. So the reason why you would continue to fight so vigorously is because of something that has happened in your past. So I'll give you a little example. His sister, his siblings would blame him for something he did not do. Now, he would get into trouble for that. So if I come along and I blame him for something he didn't do, like, why did you leave the coffee cup in, on the side of the table and you didn't go and put it in the sink? And he didn't do it, one of the children did. Then he would get very angry. And then we could have a fight over a simple coffee cup. True. And it's because people haven't resolved their own issue. And remember, I said, if you're fighting bitterly with someone that you love, then you perhaps need to understand that there's a lot of rejection that's going on in, in your life. And something has happened to you in your childhood and in your early teens or young adulthood that you still need to resolve for yourself. The question is, will you take accountability? Now, this is the purpose of why there are conferences for the people of the kingdom to say, I need to be challenged to the next level. And as when leaders and speakers challenge us, that even we as speakers challenge ourselves, how good are we really at conflict resolution? And we challenge ourselves because we realize we do become embittered at times. That is a fact. Okay, the next question. And that will be, how should we see conflict? Is it bad? Is it good? I think I gave that answer. There is good conflict because once you have a methodology in place, it's constructive. It really is good. Conflict is good. In fact, if you're not fighting, there's something wrong something wrong is your marriage alive i mean for heaven's sake one person is for 20 years we've never had a fight boring i mean come on have a life okay you're two different personalities you've come from two different backgrounds there has to be things that need to be resolved however the bad part of conflict resolution is how we choose to deal with it correct now, I think when it comes to conflict, there's something we forget that we love one another. Uh -huh. So I actually want to ask you, what is love? <laughs> what is love? I mean, this is love extraordinaire. What is love? Yeah. Love is a choice. Love is choosing to love your partner in spite of how they are behaving. I know that is tough at times, well, but that is true love. Well, the Bible says that God is love. So if God is love, hey, we're all going to fall short. For sure. <laughs> The next question is, how can we avoid the blame game? And it's true. Certain people run around in circles because one of the two always blames the other person. And it normally comes from one side. Yeah. Isn't that true? No, it does. So how do we do it? You know, again, blame is going to go to, you normally will blame somebody for something you've got to deal with. And if you're blaming a person all the time, it's because you're, you're, you've got the blinkers on and you literally have the log in your own eyes. So what you need to do is you need to stop blaming and actually start taking responsibility for yourself. Because if you keep blaming someone else for something else that they've done, and like we said earlier on, is that you now are saying that they have made you angry. And because if they didn't do that, then you wouldn't be angry. Or if they fetched you at um, on time outside the supermarket, you wouldn't be angry. You know, no one not one person on the planet earth can make you angry. You choose to respond or react to what is happening to you. And uh, let's make it practical. Remember the finger that you point? There's one pointing there, but man, there's three pointing back. I think that sort of puts it in context. <laughs> the next question is, okay, now we've agreed to have a conflict resolution in place. We have chose our methodology, but the one partner not bringing their side and they're not coming to the party what would you do i'm going to give my own answer you give your answer <laughs> so what we did do all right because we both come from the corporate environment and we understood about meetings so every time we would have our meeting to resolve a conflict and please always remember when you're resolving conflict it's when you're in a good frame of mind you never resolve conflict when you're angry okay so we made sure that we would write down and agree that this, if this issue happened again, this is how we're going to behave. This is what we're going to do. And we would sign it. So the next time it happened, we never ever said, oh, but you said that you were going to do this and we agreed on this. All I would do is go and get the file and I would put it on the table. 
I'd open it up to the situation and I would leave it on the table. I don't have to say anything. Anthony would do exactly the same thing because you will read the file when you pass it and you will be reminded. Let the Holy Spirit do the work, not you. Took the words out of my mouth. And that is that, yes, it's a practical side. It's a file to remind you. And you agreed, this is our methodology. This is what we'll do. Once you read it, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you because, man, we are stubborn. As, as, as mankind, we are so yes, stubborn. We are. But if we are willing to learn and embrace it and go next level. Next question. Next question says, okay, how do you fight when the one person is always silent? They keep everything in silence. You want to go and resolve it. You want to sit and just talk. And now you've calmed down and just want to sit and chat. Silence. And the person doesn't engage. First, I think we need to talk about why does it happen? And two, yeah. what is the possible responsibility? Well, I want to tell you, it's normally the people who are introverted in terms of their behavioral types. The way they deal with it is actually silently running away. By being silent, they thinking they're avoiding the conflict. But I can tell you now, by sweeping it under the carpet, after a while, that carpet is getting pretty high and you can't step onto it. You'll trip over it and you'll fall and you'll break your neck. So I'm just telling you straight. Sweeping problems under the carpet is not the solution because the silent treatment, number one, if it's a chosen behavior, is cruel. To cut the other person out with silence is cruel. Repent. Ask for forgiveness. Move on. Can I repeat that? Yeah. Repent. Ask for forgiveness and move on. What's your answer? Well, ladies, if your husband is the one that is not speaking to you, it's more than likely probably the way you approach them. Because trust me, if I approach Anthony shouting and screaming and say, you didn't do this and you forgot this and whatever it might be, he too will actually be silent and not even approach me. So it is how you do it. So if I do want him to chat, I would say then set up a time let the children be either asleep or out at friends, sit down with a cup of coffee and say, look, I have a problem and I need your help. This is what my problem is. How would you fix it? And there you saw the master at taking accountability because when you know you're wrong, you've erred, fix it because you take responsibility. Easy as that. Next question is a difficult one. It says, how can I deal with recurrent abusive words from my spouse every time we disagree? And that means that the one partner is always using strong words, swearing and cursing the other person. What would you do? Well, firstly, I just want to say to the person who is using bad language, belittling, the issue actually is with you. And I'm sorry to say this. Because you, hurting people will hurt people. And you want to lash out and you want to say nasty things because there's unresolved issues in your life. And I really recommend that you go and chat to someone. And I was one of those people. I was one that would lash out with nasty words because I'm very good as a, as a communicator. I'm very good with my words. I'm a small human being, so I can't come out fighting. So I would come out fighting with my mouth. And I would win with my mouth. And I thought I felt good until I saw the hurt and the pain that I caused in Anthony and in my children. And then I went for counseling to deal with the one thing that was making me wanting to lash out and hurt other people. When that was resolved, when we had a fight, there was no need because I could then see the beauty in people in front of me and not my vengeance and not my anger and not my desire to win. As you guys can see, a lot of the resolve lies in growth. Mm -hmm. I can tell you honest that once I had a problem and because Michelle and I have now grown to the point where we actually communicate directly, she just said to me two words, grow up. <laughs> I was devastated. What? <laughs> what? And then I just remembered like a frog, grow up, grow up, <laughs> grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up. So all I want to say to you is it's possible. Okay, here comes the toughest question for tonight, I would believe. Should I continue with my relationship where I'm always in disagreement with my partner, yet I know I'm in love? Wow. You know, in the world, it is so easy today that the person sneezes and you want to divorce them. Is that really God's heart for you? 
I mean, when God is love and he from him, love emanates and we choose to love one another and God makes that love grow and become better and better. And like I said, after 26 years, the key is we still in love. But now, if you find yourself constantly bickering and fighting, do you end that relationship? Ladies first. Unfair, I know. Ladies first. <laughs> I'm going to say the reason why you're doing that, especially if you love each other, is because one, you never ever went for marriage counseling. And in, if you did go for marriage counseling, they never asked you the tough questions. The Bible says it's the little foxes that ruin the vine, not the big issues, because big issues you and I deal with. Did we ever, and I will, I'll tell you a little fox that nearly ruined our relationship. I use a face cloth, all right? And so every morning when I get up, <laughs> it's um. lovely. Every morning when I get up, I go to the wash basin. I take, now I, it's, it's a, my wash basin. So I would put the face cloth over the front of the wash basin and I'd wash my face and I'd put it there so that it would, it would dry. Now, Anthony would wear his suit to work and he would not have his jacket on, but he would come to brush his teeth. And every single morning it would wet his tongue. Now, we literally, he would leave the bathroom upset because he'd have to change his child but none of us knew what the problem was and by the time he came down the passage he was irritable and i used to say to him you know what go to work just get out the house go to work because i don't know what happened to you in actual fact i'm gonna ban you from that bathroom because when you go in there the devil attacks you and the moment she said <laughs> that i said bathroom so we went to the bathroom to together. see to find the devil and the devil was in the face cloth, the face cloth. <laughs> So sometimes you blame the devil, but it's a practical little thing that the face cloth was right in front. I just went, oh my gosh. So now ladies, I take the face cloth and I put it on the side of the basin. We both win. So you can see, I felt like I won. I still had my face cloth. He felt like he won because his tie wasn't wet. The res resolution was won. So for the last 21 years or whatever it is that we've been doing it, that's how we resolve the conflict. It's the little foxes. How do you squeeze a toothpaste tube? Which way is the toilet paper? Do you put your coffee cup in the sink? Do you leave a, your things in the lounge before you go to bed? Those things, resolve them, get a resolution. And all I can say to you is when life really gets serious and you actually, something happens, you nearly lose your partner, you forget about the toothpaste and the little bit you had because you realize that was your partner. And that is more important. Therefore, get the little foxes out of the way. Here comes a very ugly question, but well done for the person who asked this. I'm being harassed by my wife during conflict. She never keeps a hand to herself. She taps me, she points me the finger, and she hits me, and this annoys me. What should I do? Woo! I can just feel what's happening right now in me as a husband. And I can just see this person pointing and pricking and pushing the husband at all times. From my side, I want to first say as a man, I'm a man. I mean, I can like this hurt you if I really wanted to. And because of God's self-control, I pray that he allows me to keep the self-control that I don't lose it. Because you know what? Men are used to defending themselves. We grow up as the defenders. We go out to get the moves. And I can tell you one thing. This is a big, big challenge for a man. So ladies, from me, don't do it. Just don't go there. So I'm going to ask any advice from you. Well, the very, the very way that you can resolve that is one, the lady who's doing that, you need to go for counseling. There's an issue in your life where you have been emotionally or some way you've been abused um, physically and now you want to take it out on someone. They always say you will hurt the person closest to you. But you must remember this is a life partner that you have chosen to live with. And that's not how we treat people. So what I would suggest, if you take the advice that we gave right at the very beginning, which is God's word, where God's word says, in, do not sin in your anger. Yeah. It is your responsibility to walk away. A strong, godly, intelligent human being knows to walk away from a fight. And you walk away. Go and deal with yourself. Make sure that you are calm. When you are calm and you're in a good mood and feeling good about yourself, then go and discuss the issue because that way, 
when you go to the fights principle and you stay tuned in there and you side by side and you look at your partner, because remember, when you got married, you stood there facing each other and you looked at each other in the eyes and said, I will stay your partner. When you're calm and you've got a gentle, quiet spirit, you will never do that again. And I wish and pray upon you that you will resolve that conflict within yourself. And so I want to encourage you, if it's really that bad, at that moment, the best thing is just to not say a word, turn around and send yourself to the room. Because you know we can get you encouragement at the foot of the cross. You just go, humble yourself and say, Lord, this, this is too hard for me. Take it away from me. Same way as Jesus big. Because I can tell you one thing. We've got a gracious father that is kind. And he will heal your heart and will give you the strength to rise up once you've gone to the foot of the cross because you'll know how to deal with it. But ladies and gents, what we just spoke about, there is no ways that love can be expressed by harassing each other physically. Never, ever. It's not going to happen. And the next one actually goes on with that. Oh, and says, another one. Yeah. My wife <laughs> embarrasses me in public. Wow. Oh, yeah. Somebody is very honest here. Thank you for the honest, honesty here. My wife embarrasses me in public. She insults me a lot in front of my friends. How do I stop her? Discuss it. <laughs> very simple. You know, again, Get yourself calm, get your wife sitting down. And again, if you, you, you know, if I had to embarrass Andy, he would sit down and he'd say to me, Shelly, he calls me Shelly, so use the nickname. And he'd say, Shelly, you know, um, I know this is something that's, that I need to deal with. But when you said this, I felt embarrassed or whatever. Could I ask you, please, not to do that in the future? And because you're honest, and because you're really working at finding resolution, and not focus on the conflict, you actually get a result. And that way it really can be done is by, if you, look, I, I, I can't believe how would that be the, How would be the wrong way to tell me not to do it anymore? Well, to tell you. Exactly. I mean, that's it. Just All telling right. you I'm not going to do it, but you come to me and you ask me and, it, and they said, so if I came and said, yeah, you know what, again, there we were out with our friends and all the rest of it. And you know what, I'm sick and tired of you always embarrassing me in front of people. Guys, you're not going to resolve your conflict. Not at all. Okay, so, so it's how you do it. The methodology becomes key. Because the last question, and it says, is it okay to fight in front of our children? I want you to think about that. The natural response is, no, never. Do you? I think most couples do fight in front of their children because they just don't care anymore. But here's the truth. When you learn how to do this, how to put fights into your life, and you put the methodology in place, and you truly become masters at doing this over and over and over and become good at it, well, this is the response you might get. So initially, when we did have our bad fights, that was totally not the right thing to do in front of our children. But as we mastered the art and as we learned to respect each other, to honor each other and try to speak to each other as though we were speaking to Jesus. OK, when we learned that we didn't realize that one of our children were actually in the lounge and they were lying on the couch. And we didn't realize it because we had our desks behind the lounge and we were sitting and um, having a chat and we were discussing. Now, we were very firm in what we were saying. We were trying to put our point of views across. And our child could hear that this wasn't just a normal, fun conversation. This was a serious, deep conversation that we were trying to get a resolution for. We came up with a resolution. We agreed on the resolution. We signed the resolution. We high-fived each other. And our child sat up and said, did you two just have a fight? And we looked at each other and said, yes, we did. And they said, wow, okay, I want to fight like that. Okay, so well, role modeling. It's all worth it. So all you have to do is to try this over and over. So let's just wrap up. What will really make a difference in your life tonight? Number one, and that is that you need to understand that there's a timeout principle. When you're too angry, call timeout. There's a time and a place to it. The person who calls the timeout is the one to get back into the, into the ring first. The timeout principle is going to solve it. Then we spoke about the principles they've had in the Bible, and that is that if you're angry and you know this is going to take until the morning hours, don't. Just identify the anger and deal with it when you both are calm. We never deal with anger when you're angry. Then we had the fights principle, and that this, this, can we do it again? Here we go. Face, <laughs> Face each, each other. other. Isolate, isolate the issue. issue. Guard, Guard your time. Halt history. history. Tune, Tune in. in. 
and stay in there. But remember that isolate the issue, there was a key there, and that is that the pillow on the floor method might just be the key for you because what it does, instead of you facing each other and the focus is on each other, we are now side by side and we're focusing on the problem and we resolve the problem. So it is our prayer that you'll take these principles, practice them over and over and over, and you can see the reward after 26 years. Absolutely. I love this woman with everything in my life. I'm grateful. And all I can say to you is keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Humble yourself and just say, Lord, I can't do this by myself. And embrace your partner as together, together, you do conflict resolution. Absolutely. And happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's.